we drink tequila, we talk. Welcome to Team Tequila Talks. Talk, talk. Mm-hmm. a perfectly ripe pineapple. Cool. Super, super sweet. And welcoming you to a perfectly ripe Team Tequila Talks. We are so lucky to have Mark Strong from the House of Strong back with us and always your host Cassandra Gidamel and Sherryon Gonzalez. We're really excited to have Mark back because he's going to get into some of the fun tequila concoctions with us. I am so excited, you guys, because we have gone to Mark's house for a little sushi and chill. I like, no, it's a Pilata sushi tequila Ooh. chill. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. We do Pilates. Mark makes us sushi. I know we have a tough life. <laughs> and then he also makes us margaritas. It's actually the best sushi in Los Angeles. There's I not a, a restaurant job, right? that can, absolutely you do. I'm impressed with myself. So we here at Team Tequila Talks. Always drink 100% blue agave tequila. And we always are talking about the benefits and the best ways to drink tequila. That is going to be accomplished by mixing it with all kinds of ingredients that might be heart healthy or gut healthy or hydrating. And we're going to get into more of that today. Mark, what are we drinking? So today we are going to drink, it's my cocktail, I call it Heal Me Daddy. Excuse me, excuse me. Hail as in like rain hail? Heal. 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 H-E-A-L. H-E-A-L. Heal me daddy. Yes. Well, why don't we first before you get, why? Why? So basically it's a healing cocktail for me. And with turmeric, there's turmeric in there, there's pineapple, there's mango, there's coconut water, and there's also black pepper with tequila, dash of lime, And yeah, pretty much I start with turmeric. So turmeric is one of the like most powerful anti-inflammatory agents. And what else? It has everything in it. And it's antiviral, anti-everything, anti-cancer, also great for your skin. So it's also great for glowing the skin up too. And yeah, and it's also a great muscle recovery and also great for your joints. So I love this cocktail because we can also have this right after a workout. It's really good for the joints and the muscles. And then it can be a mocktail or a cocktail. So you do not have to add the tequila. But on this show, we're going to add tequila, right? Absolutely. And that is one thing that we really like to cover here at Tequila Talks as well. Because this team drinks tequila, but we recognize that your team might not. And that's cool, too. So you can take a lot of the things that we're learning about with some of our guests, especially a guest like Mark Strong, who is an expert in his field and a body architect. Yes. And you can take these mocktails and still have a great happy hour, even if you're not drinking and you just want to enjoy some of the benefits of things like anti-inflammatory properties on a regular Tuesday on a day off. Yes. And it's also, you guys should, I also recommend taking turmeric shots daily, right? I do. I had mine this morning. Yes. It definitely healed my skin. I definitely see the difference since I started taking turmeric daily. So I'm pretty, I love turmeric. So you said you added black pepper. Explain to the peoples why you added black pepper. So with black pepper, that's how our body, it helps our bodies absorb the curcumin, which is in turmeric, which gives turmeric the yellow color. And that's why you add black pepper. It's very yellow. Have you ever tried working with it? During Halloween, <laughs> I make healthy er rice crispy um, pumpkins with my daughter. So I take brown rice, uh, brown rice crispies as opposed to, you know, the ultra processed bleached kind. And I get the healthy dandy, the healthier dandies, marshmallows, and I use vanilla ghee. Ooh, and you delicious. can, it is. And so I add in the turmeric. So, 
it is it obviously has the health benefits but it also gives it a nice yellowy orange color right the stains are next level so be careful <laughs> right and if you have a french manicure ladies like i did one time and i was mess and it stains so just wear gloves yeah the countertops the towels but it's totally worth it the benefits is just beyond and everyone can use it so yeah turmeric people well, it's also, it has some properties that are known for fighting cancer. Am I correct? Yes. We don't really Indeed. know specifically what, but just sort of the inflammation and sort of helping the cells stabilize and just have some regular regeneration. Yes. And then also to turmeric, you can also use it on your skin, topical. And you can also make a mask with it. You can use it in your bone broth. You can cook it in your rice. Like you can use turmeric for every. Thing. I didn't know about topical, but that's kind of, wouldn't you come out looking kind of like an Oompa Loompa because of Actually, the coloring? no. So I do yogurt, which is great for probiotics, which is also great for the skin. So I do a turmeric yogurt facial, but I also wear gloves and I use a brush to like layer it on. But yeah, you can use turmeric for everything, Wait, literally. So you, you mix in the turmeric with, so hold up. Is it turmeric or turmeric? Because I know we're all pronouncing it different. I say turmeric. I say turmeric too, but Cassandra hit I us with it. I say turmeric. I mean, let's look Canadian? this up. We, we, we have the powers. I'm going yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to Google it. Let's British? do the pronunciation. <laughs> Are you Canadian? Are you Australian? She's like, me and Mark said turmeric. She was like, a turmeric? And I'm like, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, I think let's it's turmeric. Says the, the person who says everything funny, Sherry. Facts. I have weird English. This is the, this is the truth, very truth. But I will say that it makes sense because if you have a red pimple, right, mm -hmm. that's inflammation basically. Yeah. So it might like calm down the color, maybe make it flatten out a little bit. That actually, I that's a vibe. I need to figure that out for myself. I'm I admit I don't get a and lot of facials on the teeth too for whitening. Okay, Ooh, I'm, that I'm, just sounds counterproductive because I feel like turmeric stains. No, but our teeth are different than an actual surface. Oh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to play this because it looks like turmeric and there's a lot of people are Googling yeah, is the R it. silent in. Okay, hold on, let's just play it. Turmeric. 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 Well, we're all saying it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why here we educate also on grammar. Including yes. ourselves, apparently. We so are... let's talk about what else is in here. Yes. So um, there's pineapple in there. So that's a really, really, really good fruit to have in your diet. So I will speak personally for me. So pineapple has helped with my asthma and bronchitis. So it's really great for your lungs and your respiratory health. Because I truly do not like using an inhaler or sitting with a butyrol. I like to keep it natural as much as I can. And then it's also high in bromelain, which gives it the yellow color in any yellow colored fruit, like squash. What else is yellow? Orange fruits, high in bromelain. Mm -hmm. And so that also breaks down to vitamin A, which is retinol for your skin. So then that's why it's also great for your skin. People yeah. pay a lot of money for those retinol topicals. I mean, right? it costs hundreds of dollars, but now you can just use turmeric. Your medicine is literally turmeric. right in the cocktail. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, so we have the tequila, the probiotic, we have the turmeric, the anti-inflammation, magic facial, and teeth, you said, which let's talk about the teeth, because I feel like turmeric would stain my teeth. No, I've been doing it, and it did not stain my Let teeth. Let me see your teeth. Ooh, look at those pearly. They're very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you can do facial. Fa it works for your face, for your teeth, for your gut. Skin, your joints, your muscles, all the things, babe. Wow. That is a must have. Wow. So this is more like a, you say post, would you say this is a post workout drink or? It's also great for post workout without the tequila, but for us, we can have tequila. <laughs> I mean, if I'm working out and I'm having this drink, I'm putting tequila in it, but you know, eat your own. <laughs> right. And then also too, with, with the mocktail, what you can do too for the evening, especially for you guys, because you guys like working out in the afternoon, you can add like maybe passion flower or valerian to your cocktail. So you're like relaxed as well. And your nervous system is calmed down. Is that a nootropic? No. So that's an herb. Yeah. Is it an adaptogen? Is it, does it have, is it, is it botan botanical that the herb helps have a relaxing effect? Yes. Basically, so it calms the nervous and soothes, soothes mm. the nervous system. Valerian yeah. and what? And Passion flower, either or. 
but I will not recommend valerian in this cocktail because it's extremely strong, the scent and the taste. But passion flower blends really, really well with this cocktail. Okay, with the pineapple. With the pineapple, it's, it works. And there's mango in here too, you said, right? Yes. And mango, do we count that as a yellow fruit or an orange fruit? So that one would be technically a green fruit. But when you oh. cut it, oh, I guess so, because that's mar- You can also consume mangoes ripe, which is high in prebiotic, once it's underripe, sorry. Right. And that's when it's green. And we just went over the differences um, recently with prebiotic versus probiotic. So tequila is from a blue agave plant, and it's naturally going to contain probiotics, so it will help balance out your gut as you are drinking. Prebiotics are going to be the food for the probiotics they are going to to feed feed and fuel those healthy bacteria that are in your gut probiotic healthy bacteria that you want in your gut to help balance everything out prebiotic is food so those good bacteria can thrive thrive so the mango is the pre the pre yes Ooh, and you just so tell us how you constructed the drink did you Turmeric flat, turmeric flour. Okay, so what I do is, so I recommend always juicing. You don't have to, but I'm extremely extreme in the kitchen. I have to do it the right way or I don't do it at all. But you can totally use powder, but I juiced everything with my hands. And yeah. Let me see them. Are they orange? No, I'm getting really good at this. I'm mastering it. Don't judge my manicure. But I'm getting used to the turmeric. I'm learning. So you just juice, even the mango. Okay, sorry. For the mango, I lied. The mango I put in my Vitamix and I turned it into a puree with a dash of coconut water. That makes sense. Mango to me is, I think, more workable and easier as a puree as opposed to a juice because it's, it's kind of like a thick and fibrous fruit. Yeah, and, you, and I only did half of the mango side. So you cut the half, then you cut them into little squares, you remove it from the skin, blend it on like level six, and then strain it in the cocktail. Oh, well, this is lovely, people. I mean, I am an expert cocktail taster. And, and it I doesn't it end t- there. And then oh. also, too, while I'm juicing, I also burn Palo Santo while I'm juicing. Oh. And the scent in my place is so divine that I don't want to leave. Sess the vibes for my friends. I feed our souls, nourish our gut, all that jazz. Well, tell people what so a Palo... So it's personal. Yeah, tell... Well, your place yeah, smells amazing. <laughs> I bought the candles you own. Literally, I like went and ran and got the Palo Santo sticks. Tell us what a Palo Santo stick is for those who don't know. Okay, so basically it's called Holy Wood. What it does is cleanse the space that you're in and you just manifest the intention that you're going to have with your happy hour or before my sessions. And I just set the mood, set the tone, set the vibe and try to keep it consistent. Oh, I have a question. Are you a big manifester, Mark? I am. Are Everything you, I have in my life is for manifesting. And are you Cassandra? I try, yeah. I believe in manifesting, and I think in a broader perspective, I believe in you create your reality. So you cannot you cannot ever control things that happen outside of you as a person. You can't control other people. You cannot control you know global events, obviously, but you can control the reality that you create around those circumstances. And I'm not talking about toxic positivity here. Toxic positivity is when you say, it's fine, everything's great, everything's gonna be good. It's not about that. It's about saying, okay, well, this thing is happening, it's making me uncomfortable, or it's making me sad, or I'm disappointed, and I'm gonna recognize that, and I'm gonna sit with it, and then I'm going to find a way to make a positive change out of it, or I'm going to work on resilience and letting it go and coming back and not letting it bring you down. I 1 million percent agree with that. With the toxic positivity, I will say this is Guilty. that it's, well, it's okay to not be okay. Sometimes we're taught as a society to just push through, you know, it's hard, just get it done. But toxic positivity, which I'm happy it's in the information space because honestly, sometimes I find it to be a little asinine a little bit when someone, when you're telling someone a problem and they immediately blanket it with like, it's going to be okay, or you're strong, Sherry, or don't worry about it. And I'm like, but ma'am, let me describe my situation. Yeah, and let you process. (laughs) I think that there's an element of, you know, delusion when you just say, I I'm only choosing to accept this positive outcome or this positive perspective. That's not real. 
that is being delusional and there's a delusional positivity element here and ultimately that's going to catch up to you so you do create your circumstances but part of creating your circumstances is saying okay well this glass is half empty and I'm either going to finish it and get a different drink or I'm going to fill it back up. It's not about changing the circumstances and putting a spin on it. That's just not true. I mean, that's a weird form of almost gaslighting by, by repainting a situation and saying it's all fine when it, when it might not be. I think so too. And I think that brings up like adversity. And I think toxic positivity and adversity have been married in a way sometimes where I feel like adversity happens to all of us. We all at some point have to strive and push through and do all those things. But sometimes a toxic positivity people are always like when adversity strikes them they can crumble yeah because they haven't built the strength the emotional mental spiritual strength of like knowing when to either give up or or surrender yes yeah and resilience because bad things are going to happen right and that you can't you can't stop bad things from happening to you so all you got to really do is work on your ability to believe in yourself and work yourself always work on yourself because i'm guilty of it and I'm also a recovering perfectionist. So yes, those two methods do not work. So would you say you have experienced in your life like toxic positivity? Yes, on a exactly. Level? Yeah. And that with like perfectionism. Mm. So I imagine both. <laughs> Ooh, sir. It's not healthy. <laughs> well, there's toxic positivity and then there's just toxicity. Yes. Which it seems like that's what's happening to the Kim and Kanye situation on an ongoing basis. Kim, or sorry, Kanye just released a music video in which someone who is being depicted as Pete Davidson, I, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen the video, but he basically is burying Pete Davidson in the video. And this is after Kim has been declared officially a single woman. And I think that I, obviously that is just straight up toxicity. Is he going too far? I believe so. I just think it's too extreme. It's dangerous. There's children involved. And it just doesn't work for either of them, you know? As our resident single person, Mark, would you say you've had, like, toxic exes on the scale of, like, one time? We don't have to get super personal. We don't have to say names or anything. But would you say, because we're not single, right? So yeah. it's like, in the last time I had a toxic ex, I was, like, 19. So <laughs> it's like, would you, would you say you've experienced some after you've broken up or cut something off? I definitely have where they try to extend it because obviously there's an attachment. But yes, definitely dealt with toxic exes before. Have you ever had something, you can tell us or not, totally up to you, but have you ever had I'm something- I'm honest, I will tell you everything. Totally have crazy. To Kanye is has an interesting and very unique platform at his disposal where he can have millions of people watch this music video and you know he's going to argue well I'm an artist and I am basing art off of my life and in my interpretation of it which fair I guess but when kids are involved and you're just talking about you know do you want to be reasonable to an ex or do you want to burn the fucking world down okay Honestly, before growing, I would want them to burn, like destroy you. (laughs) But now I'm just like, I want peace. I want to move on because I truly don't like toxic energy in my life. And I just don't condone it. So I definitely now surrender. But back then, Mark Leisha will get shit together. Ooh, Mark Leisha. <laughs> you know, I have met her, don't want to meet her. I'm actually fine with just you, Mark. I never had, I don't think I ever had a crazy ex. I mean, I had people that it obviously didn't work out with, but I, I feel like I always just wanted to on to the next, move on to the next, right? And I don't think that I ever had anyone where I straight up was like, this is inappropriate. And I know those people exist. I've had friends in those situations. Sherry, what about you? I can't say that I've had a talk. I haven't had any toxic boyfriends or I had one boyfriend. Or what about toxic relationships? Oh, absolutely. Because we can, yeah. Absolutely. Like college roommates, that variety, absolutely. Business partners. Yes, I've had toxic relationships in that where it's like it started off extremely healthy and they say, you know, the saying goes like, don't get into business with like close friends. And I've ignored that. (laughs) <laughs> and she had, she faced some adversity in her life and that adversity reared its ugly head at me. And I got to 
oh yeah, I had to cut that off. It was, it was crazy. It was like a seven year friendship that kind of went down the tube. So yeah, totally. Okay. I have a question. So for you, when were you able to end toxic relationships? Like at what age range in your life? Like what part of your journey? Oh, I would say I was in my twenties when all this happened, like mid to late twenties when I, I felt like I was bombarded and Obviously, my life had changed. I've been been with my husband for like six years at that point. I dated him right out of college, so I was a baby. Um, we were flying all over the country, and I think friendships just change just based on proximity sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes friends need you there, and when you're not there, there can be resentments. And obviously, we're not. no one's speaking the truth. No one's saying, hey, Sherry, I need you to pick up the phone when I call. Everyone's just like, read my mind, you know, at that level of friendship. We're yeah. like, you should know because this happened to me. So I feel like there was a lot of that youthful misunderstanding happened that didn't have, no one had a voice to it. Well, I don't think that anyone is responsible for making sure that your needs are met, right? So if you've got an issue, whether it is a romantic partner or a friendship, it's ultimately up to you. You're responsible for your happiness. And if you're not happy, you're responsible for communicating your needs. Now, does that mean that, Every single time something happens, you immediately pick up the phone and say, this is what's happening. I need your time right now. No, because we're all adults with our own lives. Yes. But there is a certain amount of time or a way to respectfully convey like, hey, you know, we haven't chatted in a couple of weeks and there's something on my mind because you can't expect someone to jump in your head and read your mind, right? Right. And I think a lot of times dealing with interpersonal communication, something I learned about me is... I ask you questions. Like, I'm like, hey, you don't look good. Is everything okay? And if someone says, girl, I'm good, I move on. Yeah, and we believe it. <laughs> I believe you, girl. Because you're an like, adult. We are not your therapist. You're adults and you take people at their word, right? Because why would you lie to me if I'm concerned enough to ask? And But then if it comes back around three weeks later, like, well, you knew this, then I'm like, hold up. No, honey, you cannot assume. Exactly. That was in my 20s. Early 30s, I started to not cut, I hate saying cut people off because it's such a negative thing to say that, but I did distance myself and, and reserve certain friend spaces for friends. You're gonna be in this category and box and that and that's where you're gonna stay. Well, and you're also just redirecting your energy. Your friendships evolve and change over the years. They just do because you're in different places in your life and your friendships, there should always be a mutual exchange in some capacity, but they're always gonna serve you in a certain way depending on your circumstances. And there are a ton of people that I don't maybe spend a ton of time with anymore, don't see as much anymore because that is the path that life has taken me on. But I know that if those people called me in the middle of the night and said, help, I'd be there in a heartbeat. So yeah. your friendships, you're allowed to have the love and respect for someone, but also say, okay, I only get one Friday night and maybe I'm not going to spend it with this person. And I don't think that it's necessarily a dig. I just think that the relationships change and evolve and you have to honor them for where they are Yeah, at. and respect the boundary. And speaking of boundaries, like with friendships, like how do you guys feel when your friends say, oh, you can't just cut someone off so easily, but it's like, that's my boundary. That's what I don't condone. But how do you guys feel about that? Cutting someone off is an interesting term because that can look different to different people. Yes. So for example, if someone just steps away and is saying, hey, I'm a little bit busy, even if that means... I am a little bit busier with other priorities right now, whether that is family or mental health or something just as simple as work. You have to understand that there is a limited amount of energy. There's a limited amount of hours in a day, days in a week. So cutting people off could be, there's a difference between just sort of pulling away and not having as much time for someone and straight up talking to a friend and saying, I... I'm having a hard time with our friendship right now. I need to take a step back. There's a yes. big difference there. So pulling away, there's a, there's a range. There's a spectrum for sure. And I think sometimes as an adult, you have to know when your friends need space from you. And mm -hmm. that is a life skill on skill on skill because there are times where I see a friend going through something, death of a father, a mother, children sick, a marriage that's ending. And if I'm around you and... I'm annoying you, or I feel like my presence isn't helping, it's kind of mutually understood. And then that friend comes back around. So I do think sometimes it's about 
kind of reading the situation. Yes. Circumstantial. Yeah. I'm always going to respect the honesty and the forwardness of someone coming and saying, hey, with where I'm at in my life right now, I just need a little bit of space. Because at the end of the day, that might be a little bit like ripping a Band-Aid off and not feel the best. But at least you know exactly where you stand. I would take that any day over a friend saying, oh, yeah, I've just been really busy. I don't know. It's weird. I haven't seen you. But, like, things are good. We should totally catch up. And then you don't hear from them again. Well, I think that I think getting older and a little wiser, I hope, is that I being not brutal. I don't believe in brutal honesty. I don't think I believe in hurting people's feelings. I believe in just being honest. After I had my daughter and my daughter woke up, woke up every two and a half hours, baby, for some breast milk. I don't want to see people. I can barely bathe myself and brush my teeth. And my husband was working. We were in another country. Some of my friends understood that. Some people, because I was very available before, had a harder time and being like, she's not available. Oh, she is dismissing me. And it's that. And they take it so personal. But that's a them problem. And I think yeah. it, just to kind of circle <laughs> back to what I was saying earlier is that you can have friends that if you called in the middle of the night or there was an emergency and you said, I need you, I need you to watch my kid or I need you to give me a ride or whatever, that they would just be there for you. And I think deep down, you know who those people are. Oh, yes. Friendships evolve and, they, and they'll keep changing. I remember my granny before she passed away said, you're lucky when you die, you have one best friend by your side. And I was like 18 when she told me that. And I thought, I have plenty of friends. I'm mad popular. I'm dating the like top baseball player in the country, boo. I'm good. <laughs> but as you get older, you're like, wait, I only have a handful of people that I actually talk to not daily. And I actually like it that way. I don't mind it. If you uh, so you have the friend that you can call in the middle of the night. You have the friend that you can call in, in an emergency. You've got the friend that you would call if you got arrested. So you get arrested, you go to jail. What do you ask your friend to smuggle in for you? And I ask this because Harvey Weinstein just got in trouble for having contraband in prison. If you haven't read this, I feel like you're going to have a hard time guessing what it is. Do you know? I know what, what I would bring in. Well, do you know what Harvey Weinstein had? Oh, yes. Prison? He had milk does people, which is not a choice that I would do. No. Absolutely not. I think, first of all, milk does are disgusting. Well, Mark, what would you, honestly, a milk dud? Think about it. I mean, this is an American we're talking about. But if you're going to spend 24 hours in the hole, do you think you're going to spend 24 hours in the hole for some milk duds? Hell no. I would honestly get some bone broth, almond butter, and dates. <laughs> But the thing is, is like Mark really means that. That's that's one thing that a lot of people say, oh, you know, for nutrition enthusiasts. I'm like, give me my micronutrients, give me my protein, just keep me well. And that's the thing is if you're in prison, you you know the food's not going to be good. You're not getting other nutrients from food there. But when people like people say, how do you work out all the time or how do you eat healthy all the time? It's because you genuinely enjoy it. Right, I do. Oh, Mark is about that life. He lives it, walks it, talks it, dances Even my it. dog does. Yes. yes, yes. I will say this. If I was gonna sneak in contraband it would have to be a vibrator and a picture of my husband <laughs> oh man that's I love a good that. one that is good i didn't you even need, think about that you need to be stim- look my belly look i know prison food is isn't the best nutrition but kind of like your feels need to get felt so right. I, I don't know, because there's different types of prisons, right? Like, aren't there, Martha Stewart went to the whatever. The- That's federal, which is basically a picnic. Right, okay. Oh. So <laughs> I guess it would depend on what kind of, see, this is, I live in the gray area. I'm never an absolute or never person. I just said I'm never a never person. <laughs> wait, wait, you're never a never person about going I mean to prison? That, no, just in general, in life, I don't have fast and hard rules for things. So I don't say always and never very often because I just live in the gray area of, well, what if, and you never know, and not to get too in the hypotheticals, but I believe that you can't have a rule for something until you've been in that situation. You think that you'd react a certain way, but you wouldn't. For example, I I think that if I were going to go to prison, maybe this is the geek in me, I'd want a Kindle, but then I'm like... (laughs) I'd be able to read to my heart's content. Maybe learn a couple languages. I don't know. I'm glad you guys are very amused by that. But at the same time, I'm like, it's in my mind, see, before I could even get that answer out, I go, 
But what if what if they have a really good library? Then I'd be wasting my contraband. Choice. I was gonna say they do have access to books in prisons. They don't have access to good nutrition, so I can understand the yes. micronutrient, the peanut butter, the almond butter angle. But you can get porn magazines, and so I thought we have needs that are real levels. And if I'm gonna spend a couple of years in prison, God forbid, Sherryon is very within the law. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But this is a hypothetical, people. I'm not trying yes. to speak nothing into existence. No, this is not happening for us. Talking about getting frisky, and we have our, our resident single friend, Mark Strong, here. Kristen Cavallari. Cavallari? Cavallari. 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 Can, we Cavallari? Google, can we Google that one, too? Kristen Cavallari is in a very public divorce with uh, former quarterback Jay Cutler. They've got some kids as well. And she was caught living it up. In Vegas, she was at the Magic Mike show. She was licking whipped cream off the dancers and just really, really going for it. What do you think is, in the circumstances of a public divorce and having kids, do you think it is appropriate to hop on stage at a male stripper show and go for it? Are you within your rights? Do you need to let loose? Or should you be a bit more considerate of your kids? I don't know. Where, how do we feel about this? Honestly, the reason why I love lots of the women in my life and that I work with is because just because you're a mom, your life is not over. Like, have fun. Do we have to do? She's not doing drugs. She's not hurting anybody. Just living her best life. So I don't understand what the problem is. Well, and I think if it was Jay Cutler on the stage at a strip club, this wouldn't even be a story. It would be exactly. Jay Cutler went to Vegas with his buds and is doing what millionaires do. Making and it's like it bachelorette behavior. Like, there is nothing wrong with that. I think moms get a bad rap because I think just in general, like, you know, the 1950s when women were, like, barefoot in the, or 40s when they were barefoot in the kitchen before they worked. And I think that still puritanical kind of view of a woman and a mother especially yeah. still exists today, which is why this debate online is should she? She's a mother, for God's sakes. Well, your mother had a sex life. That's how she got you. It happens. We obviously here at Team Tequila are talking about drinking tequila and we, we love a happy hour and we like to get our responsibilities done with the kids and then and then get to happy hour. There's nothing wrong with that. But you hear all the time on the 50s, wives sneaking cooking sherry and drinking wine while the kiddos are at school and gone. This is not a new thing. I don't think that there's any right or wrong way to be as a mother. You do what works for you because at age 18, those kids are leaving and if you have just completely given up your identity for the last 18 years that's why people have breakdowns and midlife crises is because they say I, I have invested everything into my children and i you know didn't drink and i didn't have nights with my husband or i didn't do this and you know my life was all for the kids and then the kids turn 18 and they leave and then it's like well now what Shit. <laughs> right well it comes into like neglect i was always told keep yourself together whatever that means for everyone and keep your wits about you because that's what made you spark and I do believe for women especially neglecting your mental health your physical health even getting I remember when my daughter was first born getting my nails done was a thing every three weeks I was like I need to get out of here and like just that hour and 30 minutes a piece was just enough for me to go back home and like deal with the baby my husband was working I was alone but I feel like neglect if you're married or have a partner and abandoning yourself is does nothing for anyone well, you yeah. have to, you know, you got to fill up your own cup before you can nurture and fill up others. You got to love yourself. You got to make sure that you are happy. I guess my point as a whole is that mom's behaving badly, even though I kind of disagree they should be allowed with that name. To. Their lives I think are not over. I agree. But I guess my point is, is this has always been happening. It was happening in the in the 40s, 50s, what, 60s as well. It's just that people weren't really talking about it. And now we're able to have an open space and not without judgment. I'm sure that there are going to be, be people that say, nope, I disagree. And, that, and that's your right. You, you're allowed to an opinion. Not everybody has to think the same or act the same. And you are allowed to say agree to disagree well i don't want to book a nanny i'd rather or a babysitter i would rather spend the time with my husband i don't want to have cocktails or i don't want to work as a mom i my focus is this and that is just fine you do you yeah i've i've met moms who 
don't drink while their kids are young. And I've been like, girl, I'm drinking. That's on you. And I will hang out with you and do all the things. Wait, can you drink while you're breastfeeding or no? Yes. You can. Oh. You've got to watch the amount of alcohol. Uh, they they do sell strips that you can test your breast milk, and it is pretty low in terms of what is actually transferred to the breast milk. So if you are just sort of oh, so they're good. This is what my doctor told me. People don't judge me. While she's on the boob, have your glass of wine, and then by her next feeding, as you metabolize alcohol, and obviously I'm not pounding, you know bourbon oh, yeah, whiskey not. i was drinking wine red white or sparkling and it was totally fine and if i'm at a meal with my husband and she was in her you know little like car seat thingy and she was sleeping i'm gonna have a glass of wine people yes as you should i don't think there's anything wrong with that at all personally as long as you're responsible life to me is all about balance and, uh, you know, here we discuss balance. We drink balanced cocktails. Detox, retox. Detox, retox. Ooh, Mark, tell us about the detox, retox. Detox, retox is because I am a health coach and body architect, a.k.a. Pilates. Usually people tell me, oh, my God, you drink and you're a trainer or you're a health coach. And I'm like, yes, of course I drink. But what's in my cocktail is basically the detox would be the turmeric, the pineapple, or activator charcoal, that's in the drink. So you're taking care of yourself at the same time while socializing and having fun. So that's basically what detox retox is for me. I love that. And as someone who is into very much so nutrition and my physical health, I think there's nothing wrong with that. It is about balance. Like and I, I said. love, I will always preach balance and that's all. Well, you gotta live your life. Nobody, I've read this quote this one time that said that nobody is on their deathbeds going, Man, I wish I would have eaten less tacos. <laughs> you got to live your life. And it is all about balance. If you're going to drink, drink smart, which is what we are here to educate people on here at Team Tequila Talks. Thank you guys for joining us. Stay tuned and subscribe for more really fun recipes, tips. Follow us on Instagram, Team Tequila Talks, and you can look up all of our drinks and recipes and lots of other fun stuff. Cheers, guys. Yes. Cheers. Detox, retox. Yes. This is detox, retox. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe the extra episode.